Good morning. Uh, God bless every one of you. We, uh, we're, I'm happy to have you this morning uh, on Q99.5. Uh, we ask you to uh, prepare your heart as I pray and get ready to share the word of God this morning. Uh, pray with me. Amen. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory and we give you honor. And we thank you for this wonderful day. And we ask you, Father God, to prepare our hearts that you will uh, uh, sprinkle your word and let us hear a word from you, Lord God, and not from man, uh, but from you, Holy Spirit. And we give you glory and we give you honor in Jesus name. Amen. Well, once again, uh, good morning to you. And I'm glad that you're tuning in this morning to hear God's word. Uh, brother uh, Gedmo won't be able to be here with me, but I'm here with a brother Rudy. Uh, he's sitting in uh, to hear the word of God. And so if you have your Bibles, or you're just listening, wherever you're at. Um, but pay attention, amen, and hear the word. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, I'm going to be reading out of 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. And the word of the Lord reads, it says, Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in, in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. Verse 17, the world is passing away and also its lust, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. I'm going to pray again. Amen. So bear with me. Father, I thank you for this day. I ask you to uh, prepare my heart, prepare uh, those listeners' hearts to receive your word, Lord God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Uh, my topic, is, it's touchy, but it's very important to know. Amen. And the, my topic is called Love Not the World. Amen. Love Not the World. And understand that sometimes uh, if, you, if you're a Christian, you've been saved for a long time, uh, we, we share with others, we say things like this. Uh, when I was in the world, and man, we say that quote, when I was in the world, then we wonder, people wonder why and, and look at us as why we say these things when I was in the world. Because many don't know what we mean when we talk like that. Amen. And, and there's three things that the word the world means or it, where it, it could mean. Amen. Uh, number one, when we say of the world, it's talking about the material creation of the world. Amen. Uh, which, which is the beauty. Amen. The nature of uh, the waters. And, and, and that's one definition of the world. Amen. But it's not saying to lo not love the beauty of creation. It's not saying love the animals, the flowers. That's not what, what the scripture is talking about. Amen? Amen. And so that, that's one definition of what the world means. Another word, it could mean, talking about the world, the word the world, means the mankind, as in John 3, 16, right? It says, Does, uh, for God so loved the world, right, that he gave his only begotten son. Amen? Amen. And so that's one way, but it, is, it doesn't mean not to love people. Amen? For God so loved mankind that he gave his only son. And so when it's talking about the world, it, it could mean this definition as well. The unbeliever's world system. Amen? The world system that opposes God. Amen? The kingdom of Satan, which is what we call in Christianity the world, Paul is saying, do not, or, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, John is saying, do not love the world, amen. He's talking about the, the unbeliever's system, amen. The world system is ruled, say the word rule, yeah. is ruled by Satan, amen. In 1 John 2, 15, it says, do not love the world, nor the things in the world. Amen. And it says, and, and if anyone loves the world, 
the love of the Father is not in him. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If, the word if, means that you don't love God because you love the world system that is ruled by Satan. Amen. And verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. Amen. And I'm going to break this down for you as simple as I can. Uh, 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 I don't want to step on your toes, but if the shoe fits, put it on. Amen. Uh, number one, uh, uh, let's break this down. Amen. And so it's very simple. I won't take all your time, but listen to the word. Amen. This is the word of God. Amen. It says, uh, uh, John is telling us, is teaching us, this not do not love the world, amen. And he says, for all that is in the world, amen, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the, bo and the boastful pride of life, amen. There's three things there. Number one, he says, the lust of the flesh. What does this word lust mean, amen? The word lust, I'm going to give you the definition, means having a strong desire or a craving, amen, a desire out of control. Have you, ever, have you ever in your life had a desire for something that it just controlled you, you couldn't sleep, you couldn't think, it, it was bothering because you, you desire that object, whether it was like a cigarette, amen, whether it was a beer, excuse me, or whether it was something that you were just craving, man, I, I need this thing in my life, amen? It's a crave, it's a desire. And if it's out of control, you cannot live without it, amen? And, and that's how a lot of drug addicts are, amen? I'm going to teach you, if you don't know how drug addicts think, this is how they think, amen? When they're hooked on a drug, amen, a, 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 a being hooked is like, uh, you cannot live without this high in your life, amen? And so in a drug addict's mind and heart and soul, all they could uh, crave and desire is that drug or that high. And so they chase after it, they lust after it, and that's all you see, and, and that's what you see. They will do whatever it takes to get that high, amen? amen. They have a lust in their hearts, and it's out of control. Amen? And so that word lust means it's very simple. A strong desire or a desire out of control. Amen? And so the lust of the flesh. Amen? So we, we understand the word lust, but let's talk about the word flesh. Amen? The word flesh here means our sinful nature. Amen? It's not talking about your, your physical body flesh. Amen? It's talking about our sinful man. Amen? Uh, Adam's sinful nature of the old man before being saved. Amen. Understand this. And if you've been listening to us on Sunday mornings, we, we talk about this uh, a few times that every man, every person, every woman, every person born in this world is born with a sinful nature. Amen. We cannot uh, uh, shake it off. We cannot deny it. It's something that is we are born with. Amen. Amen. It's in our nature. Amen. And so the word flesh, what this word means, it's our sinful nature. Amen. If it sees something, it, it's, it's going to crave it. Amen. Yeah. And so the lust of the flesh involves anything that our body craves. I'm going to give you a few examples. One example that every one of us is in common with and we're familiar with is sex. Amen. God has given us this desire for sex, amen? It's a desire that God built in every person, amen, to be enjoyed, but within marriage, amen? The flesh, however, will take this gift of God out of control to have sex with whoever and whenever. When it's out of control, 
you will shake it up, you'll shack up with anybody, anywhere, anyhow, anyway. Amen. Amen. And so you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Because we every person is born with this in their bodies, in their minds. Amen. And so that's one example. And that, I, I, I think I could live it with that one, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Can someone say amen? amen? And so the flesh, amen, our flesh, it gets out of control sometimes, amen. And and the, this this is the lust of the flesh. Let me give you one more example, amen. And, and some of you are going to hate, hate me on this one. Some of you might turn off the radio after this one, but... Another uh, uh, crave that everyone deals with, everyone, amen, I'm not the only one, and it's not your phone, amen, but it's food, amen, <laughs> F-O-O-D, food, amen, everybody loves to eat, amen, yes or no, amen, if you, if you agree with me, uh, say wherever you're at, say amen, 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 and so God made our bodies, and it hungers for food. In order to maintain life. Amen. God designed your body, my body, to crave food. If we don't eat, you're not going to be happy. Right? You're going to be what? Hangry or angry, hangry. That's what they say, that the term hangry. I'm hangry because I haven't ate yet. You know why? Because when you eat, it, it does something to your body. But when we take this desire for food out of control then it is what is called gluttony amen gluttony gluttony is the desire out of control and many are trying to lose weight with a diet coke when all they need to do is keep away from the table and seconds amen and, and all you need is just, uh, the, the doctors will tell you, just eat one meal, just this little bit, and that's all you need. But when you're at the buffet table, why do you keep on going to the buffet table for? Because your, your body wants to eat more and more. Amen? amen? It is something that we will we, we'll, we'll take advantage of. Amen? amen. Are y'all still with me? <laughs> amen? For those who are still with me, amen? There's nothing wrong with eating food. But, but when your body has enough, that's all it needs. Now, if you eat more than you need, now you're in gluttony. Amen. Amen. And, and uh, uh, the guys and girls I work with here in, in our ministry, uh, they love to eat food. Amen. And, and if they're not here for Jesus, they're here for food. <laughs> Amen. And, and you look at these men and women, they, can, they come in Amen. and bones and and nothing in their stomach, so there are all the drugs and all the alcohol they did in the streets. And in a few months, they're all big bones, amen. And it, and it was nothing but food, amen. amen. And so, uh, but there's nothing wrong with food, amen. I'm just saying, when we take it out of control, hey, it's gluttony, amen. And so, uh, when when we hear John here talking about uh, concerning lust of the flesh, amen. The lust of the flesh. We, we, we live in a generation today, amen, on, on our phones and, and, and internet and Facebook and Instagram, Snapchat, whatever you want to say, we, and on TV, cable, wherever, everywhere we see is, is all this crave and lust and lust and lust. Whether it's for alcohol, beer, sex, women, drugs, money, uh, 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 jewelry, clothes, name it. Every, everywhere you see, there's a crave for something. Yes. And it's a lust, man. It's a lust. Yes. And, and the flesh loves it. Yes. Man, it, it, even tattoos could be a lust, man. Yes. Where I know people were, man, they, they're, uh, they lust for that, that ink, that needle, man. You know what I'm saying? And so if you see yourself, man, I have this crave that I can't stop loving. Hey, that's the lust of the flesh. And and what the reason why why God is saying if you love the world is because when, when you love something more than God, that is what we call an idol. Amen. Amen? Where food is an idol. Sex is an idol. 
uh, 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 drugs is an idol. Uh, uh, clothes is an idol. It's not just drugs and alcohol and all the bad things we see in life. No, it's everything around us. It could take your place before God. Anything that takes your place before God is an idol. And when you lust for it and desire for it, and, and that's where it comes in. Amen. That's why and John says, do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the Father... If anyone loves the Father or loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen? For all that is in the world, everything around us, the lust of the flesh. And, and then it goes on to say, and the lust of the eyes. Oh, I'm going to poke some eyes out. Amen? Uh, God has given us the desire to own things and to possess things on our own. Amen? Which is fine. But the lust of the eyes... Pushes us to greed. Amen. Can you say the word greed? Greed. Amen. It never it the word greed means it's never satisfied and you want more and more. Amen. Greed is wanting more than what you need. Are you with me? Amen. When you need more than you need, then you're greedy. You're a greedy person. Amen. You know, if you uh, have a job and a family, you, you kind of keep a record of, of how much money comes in and, and how much money you have in the bank, what goes to bills. And you see in paper how much you need to get by. Amen. It comes to a point where uh, a lot of us are guilty, man. I'm guilty of this sometimes too, is that we, we see, okay, I, 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 I can live okay in this budget, but I want more. I want more for me, more for my family, more. And, and, and that's where greed comes in, man. The last of us, you want more than just what you can settle for, man. Yeah. And so let me give you an example of, of the mall. When you go to the mall, man, I have nothing against going to the mall. I go to the mall with my family, with my wife, my daughter. There's nothing wrong going to the mall. But when you go to the mall and you don't have any money and all you're doing is feeding the spirit of greed, and man, you go, you're looking at the, the, the new Jordans that came out, or you're going at the new clothes that came out, and you're greeting, and you're lusting for these things, and you have no money. Like, well, what are you doing to yourself? You're going to ruin yourself. And man, see, you see this, and, and that, and you want it so bad, and all you're doing is feeding the spirit of greed. All you hear in your spirit is buy me, buy me. Yes, sir. And there are some of you that already have nice furniture. You already have nice clothes. You already have nice appliances. A man, you have a nice car. And you still want more and more. Yeah. See, greed is when you want more, you want more just then. Let me say this again. I'm going to rephrase this. Greed is when you want more just like the drug addicts and women are worse than some addicts. Amen. See, Satan runs his kingdom. This is how he runs his kingdom. is on self. Amen. To make you this content, the lust of the eyes turn to greed. Greed is a strong desire to have more. The greedy person doesn't know, uh, uh, knows, he, the greedy person doesn't know the meaning of enough, amen? Yeah. The greedy person is always craving, striving, uh, desiring, out of control for more and more and more. The desire to have things we don't need with money we don't have to please people we don't know, you're what we call keeping up with the Joneses, amen? You're, you're, you're trying to impress people, amen? Stop trying to impress people. Stop trying to uh, 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 impress your friends at school. Oh, I got new clothes. I got new Jordans. Yes, yes. Hey, hey, be content with what you got, amen? Yes. Don't worry what other people think, amen? Yes. And, and this is how the devil does things. He puts it in our... He, he, he's been programming, programming every person since we're all little with this mentality. You need that. You need this. 
You need a better car. You need a better phone. You need the new iPhone. You need the new, uh, 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 what's the other phone? Gal- Galaxy. Nine. Right? And you have, and, and, and this is the mentality. You see someone with it, and also you lost. Like, man, this guy got a new phone. I need a new phone. No. What's going on there? The lust of the eyes. And man, how do you know if you have the spirit of greed? Check this out. I want you to check your wor- wor- your warehouse. Check your dresser. Check your shoes. Check your suits. And man, check your things. Most of the extra clothes you have don't fit you anymore. Amen. Amen. Yes. But why do we hold on to these things? Because we're greedy. Amen. You're greedy. Amen. And and, and I don't want to poke on no more toes or step on any more toes right now because I, 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 this is a tough topic. Amen. No one wants to talk about. It. No one wants to tell you this. But because uh, I, I'm a minister of the gospel. And God tells me, you need to share this to everyone that listens, that we need to learn to trust God and be consent uh, uh, with what God gives us. Amen. Amen. Be, be consent. Be, be good. Be, God bless you. He's protecting you. You got your family. You're healthy. What else do you want? Amen. Amen. Come on. Let me finish this. Amen. Here, John is talking in First John chapter 2, he says, uh, I'm going to read again from verse 15. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and, this is, and the boastful pride of life. Amen. What is pride? Amen. We all kind of have a definition of what this means or understanding of what pride means. But let me share with, with you a few definitions. What is pride? Pride is the sin of self-worship. Amen. Pride is the sin of self-worship. See, pride is the sin of being in love with yourself. Amen. Amen. A feeling of being superior and self-important. A feeling of being puffed up like a frog. Amen. Have you seen uh, people wearing a Rolex watch? Well, a time does the same thing concerning giving you time. Uh, Both people that has a watch, uh, whether it's a Rolex or or a Mickey Mouse watch, they both take the same time. Amen. Amen? People wear chains outside their clothes. What do you call that? Pride. Amen? People are so proud of themselves, not knowing that we are all created out of the same dust of the ground. Are you with me? Some are white mud balls. Some are brown mud balls, some are black mud balls, and some are red, some are yellow. You, you, you name it, we all come from the ground. That's how God made us, amen. But people with pride don't accept correction, and they don't have a teachable spirit, amen. And, and these people, you could tell them over and over, and their minds are already made up, amen. People with pride will not admit their mistakes and they always have a reason for making the mistake and they don't want to admit they have a problem. Amen. Women always want to explain. Amen. People with pride don't need counsel in marriage. Amen. People with pride don't need spiritual guidance. Amen. People with pride uh, with their teens, with their teenagers, they think they know it all. Amen. People with pride, they, uh, I don't need to go to church. Amen. People were, I could go on and on. Amen. People with pride take credit for God's given ability. It was God that gave them the ability, that gave them the talent, 
and everything they have. Preaching the gospel, teaching God's word, playing music. God has given you the gift to play uh, a certain instrument. And it's sin to be full of pride. How do you know if you love the world? Amen. When we're talking about the world, how do you know? Uh, I want to give you some examples to show you as a person, as a Christian, as a believer. How do you know if you love the world, the things of the world? Let me ask you this. I got four questions that could determine uh, um, or four points that will determine if you love the world. Number one, if you are seeking the world's approval. Amen. If you seek someone's approval or, or seeking someone's favor, man, you're trying to please people. Man, you're, you're, you're having to love the world. Or let me ask you this. Imitating the world's opinions. Do you imitate what people do? Amen. Do you imitate uh, uh, people that, that you follow on Instagram? Famous people. Are you trying to uh, 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 intimidate them? Amen. Embracing the world's opinions. Or how about walking in the world's fellowship? Amen. How many of you have ever seen people die? Amen. Or you go to a funeral. Amen. And do you see them taking everything with them? No. Check the funeral homes. And, 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 and when, when you go to the, the next funeral you go to, see if they have a U-Haul parked outside ready to bury that person with all his, his, his belongings. No, you don't see that. If anyone loves the world, the Bible says, the love of the Father is not in him. See, understand this, amen. And this is where it gets very hard in, 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 in the life of believers and Christians and followers of God. You can't love the world, which is Satan's kingdom, amen. and at the same time, love God. It, it will not work. Jesus says like this, you cannot serve two masters. You're either going to love one or hate the other. Amen. You can't love the world and love God at the same time. If you love the world, then you really don't love God with all your heart. Amen. I'm talking about with all your heart. You can say, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people here in San Angelo, around uh, 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 Texas, around New Mexico, you know, Chicago, <coughs> in California. You know, I know people in Mexico. I know people in Canada. I met people. That they, these are people that say, I love God. But yet they love the world more. Amen? Amen. And, and 1 John 2, 17 says, The world is passing away. And also it's lust. Understand this, people. What you love here is going to pass away. That phone you can't let go of, you can't, it, it's going to pass away. Amen. Amen. That car you love so much, it will turn to rust one day. Amen. Money will burn. Amen. Amen. Things will pass away. It's in the scripture. If the Bible says the world is passing away, hey, it's going to pass away. And nothing can stop that. Amen. Amen. Peter talks about the world destroyed by fire. But the one who does the will of God lives forever. Come on. Some of you are imitating the world. And some want the world's approval. Some of you want the world's opinions. And others, uh, 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 the fellowship of the world. And man, you love the world. You love uh, uh, hanging out in, in the places where you shouldn't be. Love not the world. Amen. Jesus is all you need to fulfill, to, to be fulfilled in life that we are living. Amen. If you have a problem with lust, if you have a problem with greed or with pride, and, and today, if you feel God is, 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 uh, Touching your heart, convicting you. God is dealing with you. Today, you need to repent, man. Today, 
brothers and sisters, people in the Contra Valley, people around who whoever can listen, who's listening to this uh, this word this morning, or uh, if you listen to it later on, or uh, however you you hear this word, love not the world, repent, and Jesus will forgive you. Amen. Amen. Understand that Jesus is coming soon Amen. to yes. pick up His bride. Yes. Amen. That is holy and blameless. Amen. God's going to come back pretty soon. Amen. I believe that. Amen. I'm a person that believes. I believe that Jesus is coming soon for his bride, for his church. And those who are left behind, uh, I, I pray that uh, God deal with you before that comes. Amen. Uh, but today, God wants you to repent. God loves you. And, and he placed this on my heart to share with you this morning. Uh, um, on this topic, amen, that this world we live in is going to pass away, amen. Sure. It's going to pass away, amen. amen. And so start seeking the things of God. Start seeking the things of Christ. You know, start serving God. Do something with your life. Do something for Jesus. I want to challenge you. Do something for Jesus, amen. Stop doing things for yourself, amen. Do something for Jesus. Give your life to Jesus. And let Jesus do something in your life because God wants to use your life. God has a calling for your life. God has a purpose for your life. He wants to use you in a mighty way. Amen. Amen. And, and, and it starts with you giving your life to Jesus. Right. Amen. Repent. Ask God to come into your life. Come into your heart. I don't care where you're at. I don't care what you've done in life. If you are a person that has lust for drugs, alcohol, uh, uh, women, men, whatever the case is. If you're a person that has greed, uh, 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 you, you love to have more things than you should. Man, if you are falling in this, any of these categories, or you have pride, and, and I think we all can all relate, amen. But this is the message, is that God loves you, that he died on the cross for you, right. amen. amen. And, and all he asks is, is, is Put God first, man. Put God first in your life. Seek those things later, man. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be given to you. God won't leave you disappointed. God knows what you need. God knows what you like. God knows what kind of car you want. God knows what kind of uh, job you want. God knows what you need for your family. God's not going to leave you broke. God's not going to leave you stranded. God's not going to leave you hanging on the side. God's not going to leave you on the corner with a sign. Uh, I'm homeless. My, my family has God will make a way. But all he wants you to do is trust in God. Amen. And so I want to pray a prayer with you. If that's you, uh, uh, say this prayer with me. If not, uh, just listen and pray in your heart. Amen. Uh, but if you're there and, and if you want God to do something, if you want God to take these lusts out of your life, these, these desires, this greed, this pride, say this simple prayer. Amen. And mean it with your heart. Amen. Repeat with me. Say, Father, I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart and change my heart. Remove this lust in my heart. Remove this greed in my heart. Remove this pride in my heart. And I ask you, Jesus, to be the center of my heart. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I ask you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, uh, God bless you. And that's all I got for you. And I pray that you have a blessed Sunday morning. I pray you have a blessed day. Uh, I, I, I encourage you. Get up. Get your family ready. Go to church. Uh, find a church. There are churches around San Angelo where you're at. And, and ask God, Lord, lead me to the church where they will feed me the truth, where they will feed me the Bible. And it's just not on one subject, but God wants you to grow. And, and ask God, Lord, direct me, guide me. Amen. And so um, uh, we thank you. I thank you for listening and taking time to hear the word of God. Not from me, amen, but not from man, but from God, amen. Uh, God bless you and you have a blessed day, amen. Bye.